Trans Canada Highway number 11, we're going to go for a test drive. I've got an app running on the smartphone that records the XYZ axis of the accelerometer in the phone. Let's start recording. Let's calibrate the sensors. The speed limit here is 90 kilometers an hour. I'm going to accelerate to that speed and set the cruise control so that I maintain it. There we go. So I'm making note that the engine is running at 1400 RPM at this 90 kilometer an hour speed. I also know that in one minute at 90 kilometers an hour we travel 1500 meters and the wheel circumference are 2.4 meters so you divide 1500 by 2.4 and we know that the wheels are turning at 625 rpm now that's basic math but it's critical to this process that you're able to calculate the rpm of the wheels a lot hinges on knowing that uh, specification. This is part of a science that's called NVH, noise, vibration, harshness. Harshness is when we're hitting bumps here along the way. We're focused on the V in NVH, vibration. Just a few minutes of this, you know, enough time to accelerate to your speed. Three or four minutes where you're holding steady that speed. And then de-accelerate de somewhere, um, you know, to uh, safely uh, get off the highway here. There's a spot a little bit up the road here that uh, I'm going to do that. Don't try to analyze while you're driving. All right, stop that. Save the file. I'll call it F-150. Save. I want to show you one more thing here. I'm just going to keep the Y and the Z axis uh, on display. We'll start this. Okay. Intuition would tell us that the Y axis would be, if we're trying to pick up vibration here, would be the way to go. But if you notice, the Z axis is quite alive here, quite active at the same time. And I've uh, discovered that the best detail is held within the z-axis that's the one we're going to analyze in the studio so let's head out there now
the app that I'm using is called My Frequency. It uh, can be found on the Google Play Store. Uh, you need the features of the paid version, so uh, that's a $15 app. Okay, so let's open it. We're going to load the F-150 file that we had saved in our test drive. Let's go to the info page. The uh, test drive duration was 5 minutes, uh, 303 seconds. We used a 100 hertz sample rate. I recommend that rate. I bring your attention to the uh, maximum amplitudes here. 0 0.08, 0 0.07, 0 0.06 of a G. In analyzing, disregard anything that is less than two decimal places, less than 0 0.01 of a G. I mean, it makes no sense. You'll be chasing your tail. So let's scroll over to somewhere in the middle of the test drive and select a portion of the wave. The lower half of the screen is the frequency domain. I'm going to tap on that and expand. My job is to try to help you make sense of this here. You'll recall that the wheels are turning 625 RPM, and I told you that that was a very important anchor point. 625 divided by 60 is equal to 10.4 Hertz. That's the frequency at which those wheels are turning. If we look at 10.4 Hertz, we will find the spike that represents the wheel RPM. The actual ratio on that vehicle is 3.31. So if we multiply the frequency of the wheels, 10.4 times 3.31, that is what the drive shaft should be turning at, at 34.4 hertz. Look at that spike that corresponds to that. In a good running vehicle, we should not see anything at that frequency. We would look for something there, but if everything was fine, we shouldn't have any kind of a spike at that frequency. My vehicles are in pretty good shape and uh, they would not show up anything and that would make for a very unconvincing video. So I simulated one by clamping this weight to the drive shaft and intentionally creating an unbalance. And that is why we do see a spike here in this demonstration. You'll recall in our test drive that we made a mental note of the engine RPM, which was 1400. Divide 1400 by 60, you end up with 23.3 hertz. So as if to reinforce the concept of uh, looking at a frequency to see if anything is there and hoping that everything is normal and that a spike is not there, at 23.3 hertz, there is no... Um, spike above 0 0.01 G uh, that would indicate that anything that was turning at that engine speed from the harmonic balancer to the flywheel to the torque converter that there are any issues with that. Now I wasn't about to put a trial weight um, on any of these components to try and prove the point here. I've uh, made that point with the drive shaft, right? So you're looking at the expected frequency, you see nothing there, it's a good thing. We can discard the part of the waveform where the frequencies are above those of the drive shaft, and we can dismiss the noise below the wheel frequencies as road noise. Like uh, as rough as our roads are, the wheels do get to turn a few uh, revolutions uh, in between hitting each uh, bump on the road, right? So uh, the frequencies of the road bumps are less than the wheel. That's just road noise. We can take that out. So that leaves that uh, 15 to 20 hertz area here. Uh, that's unrelated to vehicle speed, to engine speed. Think of the vehicle as a 3,000 pound tuning fork. And I've done a little bit of experimentation with this. Even at uh, slow speeds in town, when you hit a few bumps, 
um, that gets excited. The it's just uh, the frame and the uh, body and uh, maybe the exhaust. Uh, uh, everything is kind of uh, excited. It's just a resonance, right? So uh, it's not as if there's anything that is uh, any component that is uh, turning at, that would be roughly uh, 1,000 RPM, roughly. There's nothing that's turning at that speed. It is just uh, resonance. So if you're interested in trying this out, you can get the app. You test drive at a constant speed. You calculate the RPM of your wheels. Um, that is critical. Uh, everything is kind of anchored off of it. You make a mental note of the engine RPM. It helps to know what your axle ratio is. Disregard any readings are below 0 0.01 G. They'll just uh, you're just going to chase that. And dismiss any peaks that are less than the wheel frequency as road noise. As always, uh, you know, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, give the channel a little bit of love here. Uh, hit that like button, and we'll talk to you guys soon.